thing I've learned, if you don't hold their feet to the fire, everybody gets burned. Feet. To the fire. Hold on, hold on. Before you start waving around that freedom of speech thing, 
When you're in a crowded movie theater and you scream fire, you better be able to smell smoke. If you come on this radio show and you start saying inconsiderate things like that, you better have more behind you, pal, than just your thumb. I've been listening to talk radio for years, and one thing I just can't stand is when the host has to, like, push his way on the people, beat the callers into his way of thinking, extending his ego, or, or when the callers call in and say something so outrageous and the host lets it go unchallenged. The sign you're on the road to truth is the lack of contradiction. You want to find truth, you just don't simply believe somebody because of their authority or their degree or... You, you listen to what they say, you test it against reality, and you hold their feet to the fire. And we are live. Uh, feet to the fire. I am your host, James Arthur Janchik, the Black Knight of Talk Radio. As we are here into year 17 of this little fun journey. What a journey. Uh, speaking of that, for those who go to the website feet to the fire radio.com, it's a, a couple years old now, you're so old. The original website is linked up in the corner there. It is the same address as it has before feet to and number two, fire.com, feed to fire.com. If you go to the past shows page, I put a link up. And I'm saying this on the air. I don't want to put this out too far because it gets abused. But I upload every show I've ever done up in, up until, I guess, these last ones because you can get them on, on the website. And it's there available for your, uh, your perusing pleasure. The problem is um, the... Pages that are linked up with the data that would tell you what the show is about and all that, those are in the normal place, but the physical show, the MP3 file, is not linked to that page. So what you have to do is, if you want, you can peruse through. There's a search thing I use with the Google search that you can use keywords and guest names and all that. Once you find the actual date of the show, or write that down, back yourself out to the past shows page and you will see that link and when you go there you'll see all the years and then you click on a year according to your date and you'll see the date of the show i mean it's not real hard but it's not i mean i've noticed over the years people want to have it like automatically download when they think about it and this is a little more complicated but for me to sit and put each show linked in each page i had to move my server around downsizing uh and so what because it was costing too much to have uh with the setup that i had and so now I'm doing it this way, which is uh, quite economical. And it is still fast. I mean, it's just that you have to go down. If you, could, you can go right to that page and download all the shows if you'd like. I don't think there's a bandwidth limit on it. Uh, I'm trying to avoid having some, uh, you know, some of these uh, weird search engines around the planet who just wants to have MP3s. But no, I guess they could have it. I mean, as long as somebody wants to, if they can read, the, listen to the information, fine, doesn't matter. There's no cost anyway. So that is the way to do it. feet to firecom past shows. Or you just click the link at the top of feet to the radiocom It's simple. I got it set up to go right to the past shows. You'll do some reading, and you'll see that link. And when you click on it, it'll go to a Google Drive page, which uh, has all the years. And I'll look to see if it's got the latest ones, and I can always throw them up there. But those, you know, the 2017 onward were done through feettothefireradio.com, and they're all available there. You could just click on the archive link. I thought I'd get that out of the way, a little, rec- little uh, business keeping. i get that out of the way. Um, and if you're listening to this in archive form, you could just, you know, <laughs> skip ahead, I guess. But I wanted to mention that I'm trying to get that up 
and I finally did, did something today. I mean, at least it's there. You may have to work a little bit. I mean, if you really are, are, are don't like this challenge, whatever, just send me an email. I'll send you the link to it. And it can't get much easier than that. I could come over to your house with it. I could, I guess. But anyway, that is that. Um, I guess I started a little early today. I was just sitting here, so I might as well do it. If I can uh, get to bed early for, I had a rough uh, week, very expensive week, very expensive week. I had a flat front tire, which then, of course, when that happens, those who drive trucks know you have very little time to pull over before your rim is ruined. And uh, to mad- make matters worse, I pulled over on the shoulder with a rumble strip, which just chewed the hell out of my uh, aluminum rim. And the aluminum rims cost more than the tire. So, plus, I, by the time they got that done, the customer was trying to make a point about being late and they canceled the run. And so I drove about 200 miles for free. <laughs> so, bad day on Friday. But I got to say, I'm thankful nothing happened. People who, again, drive for a living know that a flat tire could mean uh, a, a catastrophic fatal accident on the front, depending on how you react, how it reacts, and how the people around you are. There was nobody around me, and I did get a warning. It wasn't a blowout. I got a, a you know, a several second warning. I was able to pull over without, uh, you know, and just destroyed the rim. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that was that. But again, I was thankful, and it just so happens where I pulled over, the guardrail was all ripped to shreds, and the guy who fixed the, my tire said that just the other day a truck went through that rail and over and down the embankment, which was probably 100 feet. You know, it, it's on a steep angle. So that was like, oh, boy. Uh, so once again, the blessings are in what doesn't happen. <laughs> Better what does, I guess. All right, so I got a bunch of stuff I want to go through. Um, I mean, the title that I threw up, because, you know, I want a title, and I don't want to just say, well, I'm just going to be talking about some stuff. You know, it's real. But but on the other hand, I, I want to have some accuracy. But the uh, the title I threw up there, which is, is accurate in that this is the whole theme, it's like the theme show uh, for us these days. It's inversion, disconnection, and narratives. They are inverting the truth averting reality, they are confusing, and people are getting disconnected. They're just fed up with stuff, and that's fine. If you disconnect, that's fine, too. And the narratives that are used to do such, and it was like the old uh, movie uh, Wizard of Oz, Lions and Tigers and Bears, oh my. So I got inversion and disconnection and narratives, oh my. That's the uh, the way it goes on here. <clears throat> I do have the links, several links already put up. How about that, huh? It was almost a... I almost uh, did like a pro show there. But uh, I will uh, throw more links up as I go because I have more to say. I just threw some of those up as I went. I did post, and I will share the link. There are, uh, you, You've heard about the ME, the Mtel ME backdoor into your computer, which was announced oh, was a year or two ago. And uh, they, they said, oh, there's no way we can do it without complex rewrites and all this stuff well there's all you have to do is tell people with computers you know, certain uh, you know computer guys or gals with computers you can't do something and boom they do it and so there is a way to disable the me intel me in your computer though i will tell you if you follow the link it is not for the faint of hearted in terms of uh, hardware and you need to have a raspberry pi reprogram the BIOS. So it's not for the faint of heart, but it is doable, and I did share with that. Also, I put up a picture. Uh, it, it says there's a there's a watermark on it, the Liberty Eagle. You know, I don't know who did it, but it's uh, very good, very apropos. It has a picture of Donald Trump, Jesse Jackson, uh, El, uh, Don King, and Muhammad Ali all holding hands, smiling into the camera. Because, of course, they're all racist, right? (laughs) Well, that's before he ran for president. That's before he went against the system, uh, which uh, Jackson, uh, at least in that group, is a part of. Uh, And, of course, when that happens, you have to uh, do whatever it takes. They're very very sloppy and obviously doing it. As I went into my last couple shows, going into it, so I'm not going to go into it again, to show the inversion of the... uh, fascist 
name calling. I mean, all it is is insult name calling. It's not accurate in any way. And I went through it you know, a couple of shows ago, so you can listen to it if you'd like. But nice picture, and I have the links there. This is where I'd like, this is really nice, I guess, to do a video. Maybe I'll just do a video next week just to get it set up. I got uh, Richard Miller coming on very soon, soon. So let's see. I also, I will probably will be missing a show one of these Sundays because Godzilla King of the Monsters is coming out. Being a Godzilla fan since I was uh, quite young. And the last Godzilla movie that they made was really the first one in my lifetime that they did right. As if, you know, I'm some kind of Godzilla prophet that has the, uh, so I'm going to go, uh, my daughter and grandson and have some fun with that. So that, that, that I may miss a show on that because it's the best time for all of us to get together. There's a very important link. I would like you to listen to it. I will say it's a bit on the uh, chatty side. I thought about editing it down and putting it out, but it's their link. It's their report. They're found it, commenting on it, so I, I don't want to do that. I do want to say uh, when you listen to it, please bear with it. There's some chit-chat in the beginning with the host. The uh, This is, um, um, oh gosh, what's the name of the, uh, I'm going to have to click on it now to find out the name of the, uh, Declassified is the YouTube channel, which I do subscribe, and the it's based on the Epoch Times, which I guess is another, it's a, it, it's a blog or some type of publication. But they, uh, they go into detail, and, I, and I, I, yeah, I, I, I would adjure you, it's, I mean, how long is it? Let me see. Uh, I got the ad, so I can't, can't see the full time yet. Let me just flip through the ad, and then I can get to time. All right, it's 11 minutes, so it's not like it's an hour long or nothing. Not like listening to this show. <laughs> You really should listen to it because they point out in the news in the past week or so, it's been this big hoopla about the FBI director, Ray, contradicted Barr, saying that there uh, wasn't any spying. And what it did, what what it was is the news media, once again, putting words in people's mouths, uh, redacting, speaking of redacting, editing, and so forth, so that it combined... The question that was asked was, would you call, and I'm going to paraphrase because I'm not good at memorizing, would you call the routine legal uh, surveillance spying on the FBI on, say, drug dealers or on, they give examples, and he said, no, I I wouldn't use that word personally. And then they asked him, do you know if there's any surveillance or uh, spying on Trump? And he said, I, I... I can't comment. Uh, the inspector general is looking into things. I can't comment on ongoing investigation. And then the third thing was, do you have any personal knowledge of any spying on uh, President Trump? And he said, he was, uh, there was a pause. There was a pause and a pause. And he said, no, I don't have any personal knowledge of it. So th- what, what, he's, what he's doing is getting around discussing an ongoing investigation, which is no doubt into spying on Donald Trump. And it was spun because he said that he wouldn't characterize the FBI surveillance as spying. The media then turns around and says, no, Ray, contradict Barr, contradicts Trump, there was no spying. And he's saying that when it's legal, he wouldn't call it spying, per se. because uh, And he goes, he explained, because of the pejorative uh, uh, aspects of spying and the word spying and all that. And, and, but this has nothing to do with the Trump stuff, which could very well be. And of course me and you have already seen a lot of the stuff is illegal, but he can't comment on it because it's an ongoing investigation by the IG, uh, inspector general. And so somehow they, they were able to spin that around into see, but they need to give their people and their propaganda something to work with. So that's a very important uh, point that uh, Gina Shakespeare, apparently her, she's really a descendant of Shakespeare. I thought that was a fake name when I heard it, but it is. Apparently she's a uh, descendant, but she's the face and voice of the declassified channel. And so it's, it's worth, you know, again, I don't agree with everything on there. In fact, when I recommend channels, it's never carte blanche. 
it's like, hey, I found some interesting information from this source. You might want to check it out. And you could do with it as you will. I mean, that's always, I mean, I should reiterate it from time. The warranty expresser implied, but I have found it to be a source of some information. Uh, so, uh, I'm trying to look here. Yeah, we're it's okay. We're live on Spreaker. We're live on Spreaker, by the way. If you're looking for us on YouTube, of course you wouldn't hear me then. So that's... Well, for the next time, what I've been doing since I haven't been doing, you really need to have a video. It's a lot easier and it's more familiar to me to sit here and just talk and not have to look at a camera. And then all it is is my face, which, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily worth your uh, people's time to see my face. But if I do have something to do, guests, and I do have stuff to do, I, I will put it on there. So that is a very, very important uh, link and I have that up in the box already. Uh, I believe I do. You'll have to go through it because I think I might have put it up in a Minds link, which you can view without being a a uh, signed in. I think on fa- uh, Facebook you have to be signed in. So a lot of the stuff that I can't just simply put a link out to, I'll put it out on Minds. But it, it, it's on there somewhere. I know I put it in there. Um. Oh, yeah, here it is. Int- oh, there's more. I'll get to that one. It's an, it's another one. Okay, let me scroll down here so I don't screw up too much. Scrolling down, scrolling down. Uh, mis- okay, yeah, misrepresented. I don't uh, actually don't, I don't see that on the link. Oh, here it is. MSM is putting words in people's mouths again. That's the text when you scroll into the info. To go see that, please look at that. It is very important. Uh, it's funny. I saw a CBSNews.com controversial spring method aims at curb global warming. They're talking about geoengineering, and I had a chuckle. Here it is, 2019. Remember the days when you call when when you uh, when they called you crazy when you mentioned chemtrails. Remember those days? I mean, I remember them very well. Where people talk about chemtrails at all, you're crazy. And uh, here it is, CBS News. See, it, it's just like uh, a lot of things InfoWars talked about, spying on the people using cable boxes, and now we have Sh- Siri and um, Alexa and those other, I have none of those, that they are, of course, they are listening to you all the time. And then the news comes out that they actually have people listening. Now, it's not just software listening, so people are listening as well. Well, they have to. Make sure the software is doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, but anyway, remember the days, I, I don't want to, I want to mention that it's very important for people to know this. People were talking about these things 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and were thought to be kooky, and it is true, and there it is. Okay, so have a little more uh, patience and respect, I guess, when you hear things that are cra- sound crazy to you, you might want to look into them. Uh, I do have some links up there about the incoming people in the Southwest. I am I'm really unhappy about what's going on there. It is, it is a blatant attempt to just simply stuff this country. There's, there's twofold attack in this. Now, and most people listening to me are notice already. So this is why I, sometimes I, I don't have to go over this stuff because it's like over and over the same thing over and over again. But then again new people come in and then, you know, is that the problem with the people coming in on the border is that there's a twofold attack. It's not a, it's not just people trying to flee away from their country. Cause when you look at the pictures of them, they have new clothes, backpacks, and they're walking a thousand miles like that. You talk to a hiker who's going to hike across a trail for a thousand miles and you talk to them and you see if they said, so they think you should wear sandals to walk a thousand miles. Okay. Or flip flops, or gym shoes for that matter. I mean, I was uh, I did some hiking, and uh, you don't use those things. You uh, have had to have a very good set of boots. Uh, so there are. This is not people trying to escape the oppression. Uh, it is people who are basically being sent onward to a told that they get a better life and so forth. They're being educated at how to get into the system to drain resources. 
And so there's a twofold attack. One, it's the regular old people who are, just, are coming across looking for either to start a better life or to get free stuff. And then there's the actual criminals that are coming over. Traffickers are bringing kids within their drugs and whatnot. Those are the twofold things. And, you know, uh, I would not tell Trump what to do because I could never have got elected, in which case anything I say after that is immaterial because you need to get elected first. And he's he's running against all these people. He's, 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 he's basically fighting against his own party. At least now they're starting to come around, apparently. you know. But anyway, I would shut the border down. You got to shut it down because it's there. There are th- one of the stories is thirty three thousand people were processed in the last ten days. Now, one good thing has happened is the Ninth Circuit Court upheld President Trump's uh, plan to hold people in Mexico until their claims are processed because they have to change the laws, which Congress is sitting on their the, their buns. And, of course, the Democratic Congress would, do, would watch this country go down the drain just as long as Trump is along with them, and then they can come rule over the drain. That's their, you know, their goal. Uh, so it's not looking great. I mean, it's like something's got to be done. I mean, I would put the military along the border and, and put up just roll up just fences across with, 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 with people, people in military equipment just to stop it. Because it's very important. I mean, it, it, tens of thousands are coming in in days, and there's hundreds of thousands, there's millions coming in in years. And it's it's not going to be good, good. And there's a good article. I don't think I have this on my list. I will I will update it. Uh, that it will uh, it will not end good because it, it'll end up flooding those states, and it'll bring down those states economically to equate to where they're coming from, it'll be a deterrent, like an oversaturation is a deterrent from osmosis, but it, it's just not good. In fact, let me, while I'm sitting there talking, I'm going to update my little local file here so I know I don't screw up and not add this to the list. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to throw it in there. I'm going to throw it in anywhere. Um, so that I can if not forget it. Uh, because it's, uh, if I do it now, there's an actual chance I'll remember to do it. It's not that I'm an idiot. I just, uh, I guess the word might be scatterbrain, a lot of stuff to do. There we go. Uh, so it's very, very important. Very, very important. Uh, let's see. Now, this is another, I think I, yeah, I did include that uh, in here. Uh, White House sends a message. The, the lawyers in the White House sent a message to Barr saying, uh, executive privilege, no, you're not going to do it. And one of the lines in there I thought was great. I mean, he's probably got good lawyers around him to write this stuff proper. But Trump said in this letter he's not going to start, give a precedence of Congress, of the president answering to Congress or to Congress overseeing the president. There are three lines there and there are checks and balances built into those lines for example if you want to appoint an attorney general you need to vice consent of con uh, of uh, of the senate there's a check if uh, you're going to pass a law in the congress the president has to sign it and if he revetoes it and you need a big majority to override it so there's a check you have the the judicial branch can say that a law has been passed is non uh, unconstitutional. So there's a check, and then the president will appoint the Supreme Court. So there's a check there. It's not the Supreme Court support uh, appointing a judge, and then the Senate has to confirm it. So you see how you got all these checks and balances, but nobody's a boss to each one. So uh, if Congress was going to then make the executive branch do what they want. Well, now we're having a, a, a violation there. And history has shown other other times a much more legally uh, justifiable that there has been contempt of Congress on um, Holder, I believe, for the Fast and Furious, and he just never showed up. Uh, and, and there you had actual wrongdoing by the 
a, a, a alleged wrongdoing by the attorney general or the, and so forth. So uh, it's very well placed. It's like, no, I'm not going to do it. And I hope uh, Barr, again, I was not a big fan. Of th- you know, you know it's just, I, again, I'm not a political junkie, all right? So what I had read, uh, Barr was kind of a neoconish kind of guy. But I guess the neocons have figured out that it's better to be a Trumpian than uh, the extreme left. Uh, you know, given there seems to be a duality here, there is no other ground. And uh, so apparently the neocons, and Trump gives them a little, some some missiles to play with and stuff, and he probably, what I say, what he does is he keeps them from getting a little too far. Well, we'll see. A lot of talk out there, but not action when it comes to military. So it could be Trump uh, doing that. So anyway, that's the uh, uh, thing. No, I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say this now because it's on a lighthearted note. Is that I uh, know a guy? He, he's been a guest in the show, Zeph Daniel. He's involved with a movie producer, and they have an Indiegogo uh, 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 um, crowdfunding for this independent film, which is a throwback to the classic kind of monster movies of the fifties or sixties. It's called Trump versus the Werewolves, and it is. Uh, they have in this fictional movie. They have a teenager. Donald Trump is the star, you know, just like you had Frank Gorshin and Attack of the Saucerman, and uh, who was the other one? Wasn't it Blob? Wasn't that Jimmy uh, Steve um, McQueen or something like that? You know, you had these. So you have the young Donald Trump is is uh, in this movie. It's fictional and it's it's fun and it's not it, it's not anti-Trump. In fact, it'll be I guess positive. In that, uh, it's not meant to be a negative uh, thing, a fun thing, you know. So kind of interesting. I got the links there. I put it in the uh, description below that people could see the little uh, trailer and can decide if they want to, you know, throw some cash into it to help it out. Independent film, you know, they're not going to make anything like that with um, with uh, mainstream. Because it's you know they're going to have, to have Trump's got to be if they made a, a Hitler movie starring Donald Trump maybe they'll do it but you know another important link that I have on here uh, is this collusion with Russia you know the Congress or uh, Trump forced China to sell their interests in the ports and I'm trying to think it's either in, in Long Beach I think California but in in the ports down in uh, Florida. There is uh, a company, uh, and I, I you could see it in the video. I got the link to it. Uh, there's a company, a Russian company that uh, has containers. One of their things that they do for Russia is they put containers with cruise missiles in them. I think they can shoot four, and it's shipping on rail yard, regular container. I see them every day you know, I, when I work, and what happens is the top opens up, exposing the tubes and they can shoot off so it's and since containers come in to the country they're not opened up and inspected it's it's very rare it happens i've had it happen once in my five years of running containers where they will open the container up and inspect it and then reseal it with a uh, uh, a u.s marshal i think it is uh seal along with paperwork so that the customer has to treat that container as if it was sealed, even though it was opened and inspected as part of the whole deal. Only once that it's happened. And if you don't, you know, they, they bring these containers in, and they could be sitting in a shipyard, paying storage, down in Florida, and aimed kind of at, you know, Washington, or for that matter, Mar-a-Lago. And if there is... A Russian, I, to me, I, I don't look at Russia as being aggressive on this. They're not, they're not putting these containers here to shoot down the United States. They're putting these containers there that if they are attacked, this is one of the areas of defense they use. That's my a personal opinion. I, you know, me and Putin haven't sitting around having, uh, you know, shot in a beer or whatever and talking about it. But this is how I would look at it. Because Russia is not giving any indication of being aggressive. The United States... And the West is right up at their doorway. Uh, so 
this is um, this is something that you, you know. And when it, when when we talk about nine eleven, and there's the evidence that a cruise missile hit hit the Pentagon, or at least there's evidence that a plane didn't. You know, here's how you could do that. You could have a container placed somewhere, and that doesn't mean Russia was involved in it. I mean, you could, you know, uh, uh, a U.S. company could do the same thing. So that's very important to realize that, you know, people are beating their chests and they're, yeah, America, blow up Russia, man, America, you know, we're superior. <laughs> when you're getting into the area of Russia and even China and nuclear stuff, it's an unwinnable war. I mean, you win the war. Russia is poised to win a nuclear war with the United States. You know why? Because when they both destroy each other, Russia has millions and millions of underground bunkers that are assigned to people that they have practiced going to, that in a, in an event of a warning, they go right to their own bunker. Where's our bunker? Have you been to your bunker lately? You, uh, you know, remember the old fallout shelters back in the 50s and 60s? Those are all gone. So if there ever is an exchange, we're all toast. So, but luckily, luckily you got the, the Putin doesn't have his finger on the trigger. But I'm telling you, if you shoot at him, he's not going to not do it. So this is why we need to uh, calm down the saber rattling and and whatnot. One American News did a story. One American News Network. I really recommend them. O A N N. You can get them online. Some uh, AT and T, I believe, has them on their cable, but uh, Xfinity will not add them. Uh, and I'm sure it's because they uh, would wipe the floor up to CNN and, F- and Fox for that matter. This is, you know, these are like regular people reading the news, and it's uh, refreshing. Uh, anyway, they did a report on the conservative voices being shut down, so I, got, I put that link on there. It's good to have. There's also a link that I have. Wayne Dupree show put up a meme, and I had heard this before, that uh, there's a safe room. I think it was called the safe room, meaning it's secure in Congress. So anybody in Cong- uh, at the DOJ, anybody in the Congress can go read the full Miller report. I believe it's the full totally unredacted but it might be the one with like the one percent redaction for the open cases because it's illegal to uh, talk about a grand jury cases so but they can go see if it's not the full report they can see the biggest possible unredacted they can go read it and not a single democrat has went to read it and i think it's like 10 republicans have so nobody's want to read it they they don't want the unredacted version to know what it says. They want the unredacted version to hand over to their their uh, legalistic slash uh, barbaristic lawyers to hack it apart and then spin it around left and right. Uh, I should say left uh, to have it say what it doesn't say. Just like I told you about what happened with the uh, FBI testimony. That's why they want it, and. If they wanted to see it, they could, but they don't. You don't want to have Kamala Harris doesn't want to go actually sit in and read. You can't take notes. You can't take photos or pictures or facsimiles. No, are you kidding? I'm not going to watch that. I, mean, I see Dr. Ray Louise has, has uh, commented that only two people have taken advantage of this. So I guess there's a couple. This is a, a new a new uh, response to my post. Uh, so... Now, uh, here's an uplifting story, and all this stuff we're talking about, uplifting story in New Zealand. There's a, a, a farmer lost his farm, uh, not being able to pay the mortgage, so they had an auction uh, selling his farm, and all the other farmers showed up for the auction, and when his auction came up, nobody bid so he could buy it back. And it, that just breaks me up. <clears throat> That's humanity right there. What a wonderful thing. I'm glad I see good news now and again. That, that's that's real humanity helping out there. And the guy was able to buy his farm back. Wonderful. <clears throat> another uh another link. I don't think I re- I don't think I put this on my list here. But there's a YouTube talking about why Socrates hated the uh democracy. It was pretty good because we don't have a democratic, we have a republic. And if you remember Plato, who was a student of uh, 
Socrates, though he deviated from him, I wouldn't, I wouldn't equate the two philosophically or politically, but he, he did put together a thing called the Republic. A Republic where you democratically elect the officers of the Republic is what we have, and it's a good point. Um, I do have a video. Also, I think I record, I think I did put it in here, yeah. It is a little dramatic, okay, because it was done back in, oh, gee, I don't know, when, when was Teddy Roosevelt president? Theodore, I'm sorry. Well, Ted, isn't that Theodore? Isn't Ted Theodore? Uh, it's very dramatic because it's old, but it does, it's a very interesting narrative. He talks about American being... People have to assimilate into America, and the way to break it down, of course, is to have it be divided by a multicultural country. No, it isn't. You can have a cultural flavor, <clears throat> excuse me, but you have to be submissive to the American Constitution. That's the whole point. Also, uh, I was looking for a alternative to Google Gmail. I have my own server, which is private because it's my own server, but... I've had trouble with that uh, here and again. And Gmail was my backup. Of course, you know, they they go through to Gmail. Not that I have any special secrets (laughs) that I'm sharing, but I did bump into ProtonMail.com. It is in uh, Switzerland, you know, which reminds me of EU, which reminds me of problems, and which reminds me of uh, CERN, but it doesn't mean that it can't be actually really encrypted. The problem with anything I will mention is that it's encrypted, meaning that when you log on to their system on your browser, when you create email, it's encrypted, saved on their server. They don't have the keys. It's sent to the other, the destination. And once it goes hands over to the destination, then it's decrypted. So then it's no longer protected. But if you go proton to proton, it's double uh, encrypted. The problem is, if you have a key logger in your computer, it doesn't matter because when you touch the key, it that's pre-encryption. And uh, but again, I mean, if you want to, if you want to avoid, you know, if you're going to take it to the extreme, you're going to end up living in a box somewhere, or out, you know, out in the woods. You're going to be. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm experimenting with it, and it seems to be a nice uh, alternative. To Google, I, just because it's not that I I don't want Google reading my email. I mean, I don't, but it's just because all the stuff Google's been doing. I'm trying to de-Googleize. If you if you'll notice the video, I'm doing this on Spreaker, right, and it's being uploaded to YouTube. But it but also, uh, BitChute pulls it from YouTube. So all the videos and stuff I have are all on BitChute, and people are subscribing over there and listening. So in the event that I, if I ever got bounced from YouTube, I'm already set up. I can't broadcast live there, but I can do a video and upload it. So, I mean, there are alternatives, and I would recommend doing that. Uh, I'm, I'm on Minds, for example, Minds.com, and this MeWe, though the MeWe kind of, you know, I'm on both of those in case Facebook goes down. I'm on Gab, uh, along with Twitter, Minds. And me, we, you know, on Facebook, and, and then BitChute for that. And um, I'm on SoundCloud, though I don't put the shows there, but it's I, I got an account there in case I need to. So I I think it's, you know, I'm not really a, uh, a bit affected because, one, most of the people who have been affected are quite vocal and quite, like, we'll call it hostile in their portrayals. You know, they're not sitting down having a cup of coffee pointing out the logical problems and flaws with, you know, child molestation they're getting hot about it and they're yelling about it and they're making noise about it so it makes that i think it makes it easier to spin in this spin fool this detach this inverted narratives to make them the bad guys because they're yelling loud and all i could do is just highly edit their their what they do and and you know it's easier for them to do it plus you know they have a bigger following in my case you know, the following is smaller, so it's like it's like I tread lightly and carry a big stick, <laughs> I guess. 
because if somebody were to listen to the show, they would uh, hear this stuff, you know, in their face. It's just, I guess, it's just that I'm not, uh, I'm not accosting people out on the street, and I, and I'm not saying it shouldn't. It's not a my point. I'm just saying that it explains why this stuff is is going on. Now let me see if I look if I covered. Oh, Rosenstein, Rosenstein. Very interesting take. The same company. This. Uh, let me uh, copy this link out so I can talk about the. It's redacted, not redacted, declassified. Same company to classify the Epoch Times did an interesting take. Um. Interesting take in an article, a series of articles written by Brian Cates. I, I'm going to have to put him in my Twitter, draw and strike. I'm going to do that now while I'm talking to you. I thought about that while listening uh, to Brian Cates. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to subscribe to him just to get some points, uh, to get some stuff. <clears throat> uh, so. Um, let me get back to that. So in this in this video, she talks about these stories that uh, he has been doing. She, she she it's this one's nice because she's doing like a voiceover, going through all of his articles, kind of giving you an overview, and then it has links so you can go read the actual stories. But the very interesting points that Rod Rosenstein may hey, be working with Trump. Now, I don't want to start. It's, I know it sounds a little Q esque. But uh, there is some evidence in how, especially in his, his letter when he resigned and, and how this stuff and the pictures he was taking and how he supported Trump and how this and that. Now, I don't know if they if they came to him with his part in the bed and he flipped on him and he's now a cheerleader. I don't know. I don't know what the bottom line is if he was there from day one. But it's very good, interesting stuff. It may have that Rod Rosenstein may be the, uh, the inside guy helping Trump. It would be weird. Weirder things have happened, and again, I I don't want to you know I don't want to sound like a Q kind of guy just saying stuff. But watch the video. It's it's not bad. It's let me see if I can, how long it is. Again, I'll do this thing here. Where I'll find it. So it. It's not that bad, and I think it's it's chock full. The other one I warned you about was a little a little lippy, but this is uh, seven seven minutes, almost eight minutes. It's very good, and I'll uh, I'll make sure I put those links. Oh, I did have it in there. Interesting take on Rosenstein. If you look into the notes under this, uh, that's where that is. A very interesting, um, uh, in- interesting take on it. I just thought that it's it's possible. You know, it's funny. Like I tell you this stuff, I'm assuming you're going to go listen to it, so I don't go through it all the details on it because I'm assuming you're going to go listen to it. Uh, and my goal is not to take someone else's story and. Make it my own, so to speak. That's why I don't. I, I'll give you a gist. I don't give you a, a bottom line here and there. But you really should go listen to it. And again, it's seven minutes. I've been listening to a lot of stuff on the road when I drive on YouTube. Apparently, with as time goes on, you get more bandwidth with your phone. I used to get warnings, you know, using too much bandwidth. But uh, when you when I'm listening, when I I don't watch it because I'm driving. But when I listen to it, the you know the screen is real small, so I guess the amount of Actual bandwidth is minimal when I'm streaming a YouTube video on my phone. I don't have it sideways where it's larger. I have it the other way so it's smaller. <clears throat> and so there's a. Uh, I've been listening to, to a lot of items there, and uh, you know this this declassified is one I've been listening to more and more lately. Also, headlines with a voice. I've been listening to that one. Those are I actually subscribe to, and so when it comes out with stuff. I will listen to it. Uh, the untold story of Rosenstein is another one that they have, so you can look under those uh, those two. Uh, so I guess that's uh, that's that. Now in the inversion, I, I talked about. Let me go back. Let me. I actually, I'm looking at my own website, so I can tell you the. Um, I can tell you the dates. But I did a show. 
when is it on uh, April twenty eighth? Called the Extr- uh, the American Extreme Left and Trump the Nazi Inversion that goes through and explains how what they're doing is actually they're actually the quote Nazis, but because Trump is a nationalist and Hitler was a nationalist, that's why they try to blame Trump. And of course, because he's a nationalist, constitutional nationalist, that's going to be anathema to a a, uh, a Hitler SS uh, or so, uh, neo-Soviet, neo-Bolshevik, whatever type of a thing. So that one, I think, I mean, I would say to someone, if you haven't listened to it, I think it's worth a listen. I mean, I, you know, there's about an hour long. Uh, and I, you know, I complain about 10 minutes, but if you don't, I understand. Then I, I talked last week about principles to try to discover truth by. I think those, to me, that's important because these are the very principles that I have found over the years through trial and error, most of the part, and you, know, you get them here uh, wholesale, that have led me to come up with positions I have. I don't, I don't have a position. I, you won't hear me get on the air and go, you know what I think is, I think these guys over there are doing this, that, and the other thing. You know, I'm not going to do that. I, I have. You know, it's not like i sitting here in some kind of a throne or nothing. I, I have, but I have learned in the past that Started out with talk radio back in the in the eighties. Then it got into talk TV. Like these, they have these talk shows on TV, and people. And the View is a great example of it. A big negative example where people just say stuff. Yeah, hey, like that. You know, and people cheer and and they get programmed by it, and they feel like. And then Facebook and these various blogs are also like, "Hey, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to I'm going to go out there and write a blog." You know, it, it's they become. Um, they become mirrors. They become like selfies. They're a version of the whole selfie crowd where they, by by posting something, you are like, somehow you, you are codifying what you think is true. It becomes truer because you wrote it. And when people give a thumbs up, it becomes even more truer. And it has nothing to do with truth. The vast majority could sign on to something. It doesn't make it true. At all. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, this is this is the wild thing about is that the more things we have with the internet, and the more access to truth, the easier it is to share information. Because you remember, you had the gatekeepers, you know, in Hollywood and the TV and radio that would stop. Now you could put your shingle out, and you got the world that you're, but. There's so much, it's so diluted in terms of other people saying things that don't have any merit behind them. There's no thought behind them. I mean, it's like, I could be wrong, and I have been wrong, and I will be wrong, but I could at least lay down the case for what it is. I don't say, well, I think it's this, or, you know, uh, an alien told me, or, or God told me, or this guy over here who's smart told me, you know. My latest thing I talked to somebody about was they were talking about uh, microwaves being bad. And, I, and I, I'm like, well, explain it to me. Why? Well, because they changed the food, the molecular change of food. I go, yeah, it's called cooking. So does a, a campfire or a st- electric stove or a gas stove. I need more information than it changes it molecularly. I mean, because if you cook the meat, in fact, if you want to be technical, when you, when you burn the meat, in microwave, basically what you're doing is removing the uh, the water, and it becomes you know comes like a rock. Whereas when you cook it on a fire or in a pan, it burns, it turns it black, and there's it could even become ca- uh, can- carcinogen of it. Now you know I- I'm not saying I'm not going to cook on a stove. I'm just saying that if you're going to say to me that a microwave doesn't work. No, I need to know why. And if you say, well, this smart guy told me. I just one lady told me that her her neighbor was a um, physicist, and he wouldn't her, wouldn't use anybody to use use a microwave. I'm like, okay, well, why? Well, she didn't know. She just took his word for it. And I'm not I'm not criticizing her for doing that. It's just not going to work with me because I have a working knowledge of like basic science and physics and math. I mean, you know, obviously nothing great. I didn't graduate from college with degrees or nothing in it, but I got like a working knowledge. 
So when someone says to me that microwaves uh, are detrimental to your cooking food, they can explain why, and I can understand it. They don't have to, I mean, if they got into real high physics, they can, they can always make analogs and bring it down to me. And that's what I recommend to people is that if somebody is saying something, uh, they can bring it to you in terms of analogs that are better than, you know, that. So that is, uh, that's what I'm saying is that just don't listen to people. You just don't believe them. You, 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 I, I put down the links here for, for stuff I'm saying, but I, I'm not expecting you to believe me. Well, you know, I, I did a lot of work here and, you know, I, I'm talking into this microphone and, you know, and I got a fancy board here and, and so you, you should believe me. No. No, all I'm doing is giving information and then you can take it if you want. You could take it and do what you want with it and try to find whatever extensions uh however it ex- could extend into your life uh for your own use. And and, and sometimes people just prefer things. That's okay. <laughs> I don't like the way micro. I don't like how microphone microwaves kit, uh, cook. I mean, for example, it doesn't brown things. So if you're going to put in French fries in there, they're going to be all mush. So I prefer it to be cooked this other way. That's fine. You know, uh, it's preference is okay. It's when when you have the preference being harmful is, and even that, it's up to you. It's your life. You know. So I do want to take a minute here. I'm going to have to go. I got an email from someone. I don't think you can hear me over here, so let me let me get this together. Uh, I wanted to give you some highlights, and it's just wild. It's just wild how this stuff. Let me move the mic over here, so I'm. Hold on. All right, yeah, this is better. I can do this. I, you know, I I have a uh, I I. If I could be, if if I lived in another life, uh, different situation, I would be recording music as well as doing the show. And at this point, I can't, and hopefully, I can before I'm no longer able to. But you know, um, but I I had a guy email me a while back. He got he found feet to the fire. I, I'm sorry, he found the ancient one a song I've done. And uh, it's up on the Spreaker. If you look at my Spreaker account. The master account, you'll see I got a music account, and it's there if you'd like to listen to it. In fact, uh, Zeph Daniels, I asked him to if he'd like, and he did. He put, he overlaid drums and did like a mix of his own with it. So you got the two versions there. But I, um, he found it, by just happened to find it on the web, and he just loved the song. I mean, he just loved it. He listens to it again and again and again, which I do, but I actually wrote it, and it means something to me from the writing as well as the listening. And so every so often he will write me, and say, uh, oh, I, I listen to the song, I just want to say I love it, and, you know, and it's nice. I like hearing that. It's really nice, you know. I, and then he was talking about, yeah, do you still do your Feet to the Fire show, you know, this and that? And I said, yeah. It's going back the years, probably 10 years ago, before you first saw it, I found this. It might have even been more. Uh, so, so he goes, <laughs> goes to the Feet to Fire show. And again, I don't, I don't, I don't exactly know. What am I doing here? I'm screwing. I can't seem to. Can't, why can't I do this? It won't go down. That's crazy. Huh. Anyway, um, he went to defeat the fire show uh, page. I'm trying to find this. Boy, this is really having me a difficult time here. It'd give me a break. Oh, this is really becoming an aggravating. Wait a minute. What, what? It's like doing magic tricks here. How is this possible? Let me close the program out. Anyway, he. I'm gonna, I probably have to do some memory now for some reason my email thing, which shows right now the time to goof up. He says, hey, I, I saw your Feet the Fire page, and I got a little nervous. I see a lot of these right-wing Christian uh, nuts there and so forth like that. That's a, that's kind of nervous and, and so on. Yeah, I started it up now. I noticed a lot of right-wing fascist-leaning websites on your links at Feet to the Fire. This concerns me. Right-wing fascist, what do I got? Uh, uh, Mussolini tribute links? 
you know? And then he goes on to say he likes listening to Douglas Dietrich, who totally flipped out, right? Uh, never free trade for a fixed ideology he's going on. And then he's, he he writes more. You're quoting Breakpoint, Breakbar News? Are you kidding me? I've been duped. I had no idea you were brainwashed into the self-serving, self-righteous community of Christian nut jobs who only care about their personal afterlife. I'm like, what does this guy get? Obviously, he's never listened to the show. And he goes into a whole rant. It's just selfish people loving Republican sellouts, selfish me, 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 and I, and I, and I did mention me first in this world, and me, me, me forever, and me, me, me. He's just, I'm like, wow, talk about brainwashed, right? And then he kind of calmed down. He goes, well, I still like the song, though. At first I thought it was satanic, and I don't give any breath to superficial ideologies, you know, and uh, it really makes me wonder. And, and he goes on, and then he calmed down. He goes, well, yeah, I'm kind of sorry for how I, he goes, I saw Infowars and Breakbart and others, and, uh, you know, Alex Jones is an RT, so what's RT sellout to the Kremlin? What, what a ridiculous statement. I mean, obviously, the guy's listening to the propaganda from the right, you know. And uh, uh, then he started comment down even more. Well, to be fair, uh, I was just thinking maybe I should email you and say uh, you only get a voice. And he started to calm down. And then, uh, and then I, I wrote him back, and I'd like to, I'd like to read my. I, I said, LL, dude, you have me so... And I, I skimmed over his letter because it was very harsh in name-calling and stuff. I said, dude, you have so pegged me so wrong. Obviously, you have not listened to my shows over the past 16 years. I would and have been called a heretic by those same Christian sects you lumped me in with, with your very large and ignorant paintbrush. But you have not seen the first nor last to label someone by their own or lack of understanding. I mean, so he's complaining that these Christians are labeling other people, and he's doing the same thing. Worse, if you ask me. At one time in the past, I may have been pissed, but now I just chuckle a bit because, a uh, bit, and I marvel how someone who personally searches out reality with critical thought and research, blocking no resources out, you know, not blocking out uh, prejudicing but allowing the lack of contradiction to guide the search for truth can be so maligned by people on all sides and sects of any issue. And it's true. When I go to talk about a particular thing, people on the far right, far left, and all this, they all they don't like to hear it because because in reality, we all are wrong and we all have some right pieces to the puzzle from our observations. And by comparing notes and using a, an external source like lack of contradiction, <coughs> We can find we can find real truth not by consensus, but by uh, it's 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 um by what it uh, what it really is. And I'm writing here. The ironic thing is that you claim the right what you claim the right is doing, the left is is doing during these days. In fact, uh, if facts, not nameless sources, in any windows are used for reference, even more maligning. I mean, they're doing it even worse. It is amazing to me to see the total blocking off of information based on a base ideology, the same thing that you say the Christians are doing. I mean, I'm saying he's being. So it was like, I I had to laugh. I go like this guy, this guy has been writing me emails for, it has to be 10 years. If it, you know, maybe, maybe eight years. (laughs) Talk about the song. He looks at my webpage and sees Breitbart quoted and has a heart attack. I mean, what is going on there? What am I? I'm on the wrong page. Where did I go? Here we go. I mean, what is going on with that? And so this is what it comes down to. It's like, how do you argue with someone? How do you have a discussion with someone who is coming to you with the exact inversion of what you're coming to them with? I mean, not even saying which one's right. I mean, actually, in reality's turn, which one is correct? It's like, how do you have an how do you talk? Well, the answer is simple. Evidence. You have to say if you think that Trump is a or the right are fascist, you can define it in non emotional terms. Not, well, they always do this and that. No, that's not 
that's not right. You got to come up with actual stuff. And so when I come up with a picture of Trump, Don King, Muhammad Ali, and Jesse Jackson all, you know, putting their hell hands in the ring, smiling for the picture because they're helping to help the uh, minority population get into construction. Whatever. That's real. That's reality. Not always racist. And when they say he thinks Mexicans are hookers and whores and drug dealers, it's not what he said. The reality, if you found the quote, what he said is those are coming in through the borders. He's talking about those are coming to the borders and there's a legal pathway for other people to come through. He's not talking about it. It doesn't matter. The largest growing sect of pro-Trump people are now the minorities because they're seeing real reality. They're getting jobs. They're seeing this type of stuff. They're being able to help themselves, which people want to do. I mean, the right people. The left people, the, the the extreme left type of people, doesn't want to help themselves. They want to just, you know, let someone else do the work, and they just tax it. They'll just appropriate it. They'll get funds for some goofy uh, whatever. Friend, a friend of mine, uh, the listener now turned friend, I talk to him every day, basically a couple, couple times sometimes. He's in Jersey. Robert uh, Robert from New Jer- from Jer- Jersey, Jersey. He t- tells me now that they're uh, they're looking into the overtime from the New York Transit system is in the billions that some people are making $300,000, I think it was, a year overtime. And what's even worse is what happens is the last five years, I think, or three, five, five, five four years of your, uh, how much you make in those years is how your, your pension is based so that they cram in the overtime for the last few years and then they make a fortune in retirement. How mine worked with the Teamsters was, you know, you accumulate time over over time. Well, this system is set up so that they, they cram it all at the end. Uh, so, I mean, th- th- this is where this is why I say the quest for reality is important. And I realize that people will be mistaken on that journey to reality. But then, through lack of contradiction and evidence, and oh, okay, oh, I see, oh, it's really this, or or more likely, you fine tune it. As you get uh, go on, I mean that's that's what it really comes down to is you fine tune it to become more correct. You can even do an about face, and it still isn't you are wrong; is you're more correct because certain you know especially in math is like that. They look at the work, and your answer's wrong. But here's the one step in there that you did wrong, so that you'll get credit for the rest of it, rather than just getting it. No, it's wrong, you know. And that's how it is when we go through reality. We make mistakes. We oh, I see. There's prejudices. There's uh, we jump to assumptions. Whatever the thing is, when you have this lack of contradiction, you have this reality meter ticking off. When you see it, you go oh, okay, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. Wrong is one way of learning truth. It's when people don't want to be wrong, and so they change the reality to fit. The situation, that is the that is the big error here. All right. So um, I think I want to end it up here. I'm a little over an hour. I like to keep this to an hour unless I have a, a guest or something because I don't want to bore people. I know myself when I, when I listen to stuff, uh, when I'm on the road, it's one thing. I got time. But if i am got a few minutes to spare... I could not listen to something because just because it's too long. So I should take my own advice on that, I guess. In fact, I'd like to come up with a feet to fire moment or something where I could take a topic real quick and uh, uh oh, I got distracted here. Um, I got to you know I got distracted. I can't. That's why I can't read this stuff. I'm. Uh, it's my fault. I'm I'm incapable of doing things because uh, uh, I get lost in my thought. All right, well I'll leave it at there. <laughs> just leave it at the loss. I'll because I'll, uh, I'll just get uh, messed up again. Uh, so all right, there we go. Uh, oh yeah, I wanted I'd like to do those minute long feet to the fire type things where I would do like a five minute on one topic real quick. And you know I'd like to do that, and I could. I just need more time, and I'm working on it. Um. I got to figure out if I can somehow stop what I'm doing at work and not live in a gutter because <laughs> I got to work this out. But uh, prayers always help, you know. And, you know, if one feels, uh, you know, somebody's listening who's got a pocket full of change they don't to do with, there's all kinds of ways you can donate. So that's on the website, but I don't get into push that. 
So, uh, all right. We got the less visible. Uh, he had some surgery. We're coming up with him. He's going to be here once he feels better. We have uh, Richard Miller is about due to come on with another uh, another visit. So we'll have him on there. And, uh, again, email me with topics, questions, any kind of question. I appreciate it. You are live. Feet to the fire. Reach for the skies within. We'll see you next time. Fire is a production of IPS Media Works on the Onsig Radio Network of Stations.